Groves was obsessed with secrecy and took security measures to unprecedented heights. The number of people who knew about the project in Roosevelt's inner circle was small. Before becoming president in April 1945, Harry Truman had no knowledge of the project. Most people working on the project only learned about the bomb when it was dropped on Hiroshima. Groves insisted that workers stick to their knitting and only know what was needed to do their jobs. Billboards reinforced his philosophy. As part of the Manhattan Project, General Groves created a vast intelligence and counterintelligence operation directed by Colonel John Lansdale, with William O. Considine and Major Robert Furman as close aides. Deeply involved with all aspects of the operation, Groves wielded extraordinary power as he managed the Manhattan Project. Despite his unrelenting work schedule, Groves found time for his family. He married Grace Wilson, his longtime sweetheart, in February 1922, and they had two children, Richard and Gwen. Like his father before him, Groves drove his son to achieve to the highest levels. Richard went to West Point and also joined the Army Corps of Engineers, eventually retiring as a three-star general. His daughter Gwen was still in high school during the war. She often played tennis with her father at the Army Navy Club at the end of the day. While tennis was Grove's favorite form of recreation, Gwen recalls that he was a canny but not especially stylish player, using chops and slices. As in the rest of his life, he played to win. Equally responsible for his success were several other trusted aides. First among them was his secretary, Jean O'Leary, who was extraordinarily effective in running the office. Fellow workers called her Major O'Leary. She was probably the only other person who knew as much about the Manhattan Project as Groves did. There were many others who were needed to run the office, including young Patty Cox, looking stylish in her fur hat. Another key figure was Brigadier General Thomas Farrell, who oversaw the Trinity test preparations. On July 16, 1945, the test successfully detonated a plutonium bomb. Grove's team had produced the weapon that would end the war. The city of Hiroshima was bombed on August 6, 1945, then Nagasaki on August 9. The devastating results led to Emperor Hirohito's surrender on August 14, 1945. As a personality, Groves was uncomplicated, patriotic, and traditional. As an officer, brusque, determined, and decisive. Colonel Kenneth Nichols, in charge of the Manhattan District Office at Oak Ridge, said of Groves, he knows he is right and so sticks by his decision. He abounds with energy and expects everyone to work as hard or even harder than he does. If I had to do my part of the atomic bomb project over again and had the privilege of picking my boss, I would pick Groves. Groves remained proud of his accomplishments in the Manhattan Project. The atom bombs did bring an end to the war in the Pacific and he believed had saved countless lives. After leaving the Army in 1948, he embraced life in the private sector, working with the Remington Rand Company, spending more time with his family, and playing lots of tennis. When he died in July 1970, Atomic Energy Chairman Glenn Seaborg wrote, he was a source of constant amazement to all of us in the Manhattan Project. He had the deep respect and admiration of his staff. Decisive, courageous and determined. Leslie Dick Groves was undeniably the Manhattan Project's indispensable man.